Hello and welcome to Computer Tech and More. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Noctua S12A and S12B Redux. This is part of my redone series where I read the whole noise testing analysis on every single fan that I've tested thus far to a whole new testing methodology. So let's get a little bit of explanation in as to what was then and what is now. And then we're going to go into all the dark charts, data, and graphs. So first, just a generalized explanation. My previous data set isn't technically incorrect. The main thing is that it didn't end up testing exactly what I wanted to test. So the long story short is the microphone was placed really close to the tip of the fan blades and I ended up getting interference between the microphone and the fan blades themselves, i.e. I was getting resonant frequencies. So very similar to how the blade would interact with like a fin stack on a radiator or a mesh filter. As I continue to grow and evolve my fan testing in the future with help from viewers like you, I will add more tests like that mesh filter test. Uh, more detailed testing for the back of a fin stack, everything like that. But as for what it is right now, this is where I am. Uh, in order to get me to the next level, I do need help from viewers like you or a sponsor or something along those lines uh, to get a dedicated microphone for noise testing. Right now, the current one is fine for getting um, maximums and minimums, but it doesn't get the fine granular detail that I really would like to get. I want a more accurate anemometer. Right now, the current one is accurate to within plus or minus 0.1 meter per second. I would like one to that's much more accurate at plus or minus 0.01. There are a couple on the market. Unfortunately, they are a bit on the expensive side. So uh, I want to build a little test chamber for that's um, to block out excess room noise because I'm just filming in my home office. So that would be, you know, the next baby step here. In the end, honestly, it's like $2,000. Now, for bigger channels, $2,000 $2, is chump change. <clears throat> what we're going to see, so if you're um, new to this channel, never seen any of my videos before, I do recommend that you watch the second half of this video where I go into great detail as to what each of the tests are, why they're important, and kind of that finer, granular detail. But if you're returning to this channel, you can just watch this overview part and probably be one and done. But if you want to get the finer detail, it's obviously there for you. So on these graphs, we got the original testing methodology with the new testing methodology. We got the rank for each of the tests, the model, the RPM, and the noise level was generated. These fans are in alphabetical order, so you just have to follow in across. And I am doing a new review for each of these fans. But if you're just curious about one of the fans on here, you can actually just review it on the list. I make it nice and easy for all of you. The only difference with... Um, these tables are at 100% PWM fan signaling. I do have one extra column there for the noise level at maximum PWM fan signal, so RPM it generated. All right. First up is the CPU air cooler test noise normalized. The S12A was originally 47th. It is now to 20th, so that is a huge jump up in position. The S12B was ranked 39th. It is now to 33rd, so a small uh, jump in improvement that for that fan. At 100% PWM fan signaling, both fans retained their original positions with the S12A at 47 and the S12B at 48. Uh, cooler testing, value proposition, noise normalized. The NF S12A was ranked 47th. It is now ranked 19th, so a big jump in value for that fan. The S12B was ranked 28th. It is now ranked 15th, so again, a jump in per, uh improvement there at 100 percent pwm fan signaling both fans retained to their original positions with the s12a at 43rd and the s12b at 29th uh, cfm testing noise normalized the s12a was ranked 46th it is now ranked 17th so a nice improvement there the s12b was ranked 36th it is now ranked 26th so a nice improvement there for that one as well uh, at 100% pwm fan signaling both fans will retain their original position at the S12A, 45, and the S12B at 44. Uh, value proposition, CFM testing, noise normalized. The S12A was ranked 45th. It is now ranked 17th. The S12B was ranked 23rd. It is now ranked 13th. Value proposition, CFM testing, 100% PWM fan signaling. The S12A was ranked 39th, and the S12B is ranked 22nd. Case simulation test, 6-inch mark, noise normalized. The S12A was ranked 47th. It is now ranked 39th. So a little bit of improvement there, but still towards the bottom. The S12B was ranked 48th. It is now ranked 47th. So basically no improvement there. At the 11-inch mark, noise normalized, case simulation test. The S12A was ranked 48th. It is now ranked 39th. So a small improvement there. And the S12B was ranked 44th. It is now ranked 37th. 
six inch mark value proposition case simulation test the S12A was ranked 48, it is now ranked 36. The S12B was ranked 41, it is now ranked 31. So improvements for both those two fans. The 11 inch mark, value proposition, uh, noise normalized. The S12A was ranked 48th, it is now ranked 39th. The S12B was ranked 38th, and is now ranked 27th. So first up in the graphs is the case simulation test. It can be looked at in a couple key different ways, but the most important one to you, the viewer, is what size case do you actually plan on buying? So all of these data points, the 6, the 9, the 11, and the 14.5 inch mark are measured from the front of the case to roughly where the CPU socket is inside that case. So they are all assuming that it's a front to back airflow type design case, which is important later. So, um, and this is important for an air cooled system. So IE a heatsink as opposed to a radiator. So now what does each data point actually represent? The six inch mark represents a small form factor case. So again, a front to back airflow type design. The six inch mark is also representative of a short throw distance, very similar to putting a fan at the bottom of your case and blowing the air up into your GPU. Then we have the nine inch mark. The nine inch mark is representative of your compact towers, something where your GPU length would be limited to a standard ATX motherboard. So. It basically that length, maybe slightly longer, but not really much longer. Then we have the 11 inch mark. The 11 inch mark is your, would be your uh, mid tower cases. Then the, we have the 14.5 inch mark over here. That is representative of your large towers, something like the Fractal Design uh, Torrent. So depending on what size case you're actually planning on buying determines which fans are gonna be most applicable to you. <coughs> because it can be get really easy just to look at whatever is the best at the six inch mark and completely ignore the 14.5 inch mark. So we wanna compare it with something to, this is just my simple baseline. So I have a control fan here in teal and the control fan is three parts AX A1225 to one part A14. So where does that lead us? Noise normalized testing in the case simulation, we can see that both of the S12s are very poor performers. And they perform relatively speaking similar the s12b doing a sorry s12a doing slightly better at the six inch mark but both of them being honestly rather terrible how about at 100 percent pw fed signal yeah uh let's just move on because they're not looking that great how about in noise testing so the bottom end of what i consider a good fan is this yellow line and this is the wonder snail so the wonder snail is what i consider the bottom end of the good fans and it's pretty clear that the S12s are a far cry from a good performing fan. How about at 100%? Yeah, they're they're not even, I mean, they're on the graph, but they're at the bottom of the graph. Uh, in terms of noise level, and we can see that the S12B is slightly better than the S12A. The s 12 a is more expensive than the S12B. So if you're using, if you, if you're going to use it as a case airflow fan, I guess the B is better. All right, next up we have airspeed going to my CPU air cooler. On both these two graphs, better fans perform in the top left, worse fans perform in the bottom right. My cooler is the Noctua U12A. And uh, let's focus on the left side first. The left side is airspeed versus RPM. This is basically a blade efficiency graph. Interestingly, the uh, S12A is outperforming my control fan ever so slightly, but you'll see that it's got a little bit of a curve so I surmise again can't test because uh, limited RPM of that fan that it would actually level off and not really be that much more effective as RPMs increase that much more but I could have be very well wrong the s12b follows it just a little bit behind still right on the tails of my control fan take a look at noise versus airspeed that's the right side airspeed is vertical RPM or noise level is horizontal and here we see that the S12A starts off and S12B starts off significantly better than my control fan. But as RPMs continue to rise, they actually drop pretty far behind my control fan. So how do they compare against other fans? This is a small subsample selection of all the fans I've tested. It's got a number of ones at top performers, some middle performers, and some bottom performers. 
uh, selected more or less at random. So right away we see that the S12A and S12B are, well the A is kind of surprising in its position. Um, the S12B is nothing special and can largely be ignored. How about at 100%? Let's, let's just move on there. <clears throat> well, that perfectly makes sense. But remember, when we're looking at 100% P-doming fan signaling, this is letting the fans go flat out. So the S12A and S12B are at the bottom of the graph, but also look at their RPM. They're spinning much slower than most of the other fans. And then we have uh, cooler performance, airspeed uh, versus decibel reading, and like, you know, well, just here they are. They just kind of flat line out, not very efficiently while other ones tend to climb a bit steeper and better, these fans clearly just don't have the pressure application to handle it, so they get significantly noisier without giving you that much more performance. Next, we have CFM testing. CFM testing is a personal least favorite of mine. Just note that this by itself does not indicate how good a fan is for case airflow. So that leads us to this graph. And we can see that the uh, S12s, are outperforming my control fan, but once we take a look at their noise values, we see a very different result where they start off a little bit better and then they get significantly noisier as RPM improves or increases. Oh, how do they compare against every other, well, a lot of other fans I've tested? Well, the S12B is sitting pretty low on the graph. Mind, it's not in a utterly terrible position with compared to other fans around it and the S12A is actually pretty good compared to other fans. Uh, they're just nothing overall special. And at 100%, well, they aren't dead last. They are pretty darn close to it. So uh, let's just move on. And moving on means going to CFM versus decibel rating, and they're kind of towards the bottom. Again, no real surprise. We kind of predicted that. They're just nothing special. So let's move on. Next up is value prop. So the S12A is $22 at time of writing, and the S12B is $15. And these are more or less standard retail pricing that I could find off of Amazon. Note, as prices change, the value proposition of these fans do change. Uh, so that leads us to who is this actually this data set actually for? Well, if you're trying to pinch every penny out of your build, you're going to want to pay special attention to the value proposition because it's going to be how you get the best bang for your buck for your system. The S12A and S12B are kind of under that average line for what I would consider a good value, which is in the 6-inch mark um, for noise normalized and 100%. At 100%, they're pff, terrible value. At the 11-inch mark, well, the S12B is doing better than the A, but n no. How about through the CPU or cooler? Here is kind of funny. At noise normalized values, they're actually kind of okay. They're not great value, but they're kind of okay. So if you're looking at a very low wattage CPU and one of your case fans dies and you have one of these and you strap it to your cooler, note that you're probably doing just fine. And CFM testing here, they actually did pretty well, especially noise normalized. They're a bit above average, but not by a lot. So they're kind of that okay category. So if you want to make your own at-home wind tunnel, they'd be a go pretty good choice, actually. So where does that leave me with this review overall? Well, in this day and age, no, I wouldn't recommend these fans. Uh, I'm sorry. If you have them lying around, there's no reason for you not to use them. Like, there's no sense wasting money and buying more fans if you already have perfectly good ones unless you want to, like, sell them on eBay or whatever. Um or give them to friends, family, whatever, you're building them a system. You won't be like screwing them over giving them these fans. But if you're building a brand new system, there's, there's no reason to buy these. All right, so then at the end of every video, I do like to show off the raw data that I generated. So this data does belong to me. However, uh, you have permission to use it for your own particular use. By that, I mean, if you're going to put it into your own Excel table, to then make your own graphs and charts so that you have the data so you can directly compare fans in the future, you are more than welcome to do so. However, if you want to use this data in a video, publication, written, or journal, I do ask they reference me and my channel. And Well, I am an aerospace engineer, so I do love this stuff. And uh, I tended to record data all along to begin with because I wanted to test stuff. 
and I was very unhappy with how other reviewers were testing fans. So uh, if you like what I'm doing, I would ask that you hit that subscribe button if you want to see things improve in the videos. But I'm looking for constructive criticism here. Uh, how can I improve it? How can I improve the flow? What kind of things would you like to see done? Uh, what don't you like? What do you like? Constructive criticism. Um, it may take a little while for the notes to be implemented into my videos because I tend to buy a lot of fans at once and then record a lot at once. Uh, anyways, um, if you want to see me test any fans in the future, please leave it in the comments section down below. Please subscribe, hit that uh, like button, and... Uh, Think about joining me on Patreon. It will actually go a long way to improving everything I can do with this fan setting, fan testing. Anyways, have a great day, and I hope to see you next time here on Computer Tech and More.